Hi, this is Brian Bell from Weezer and The Relationship, and you're listening to Cigar City Radio. Cigar City Radio is sponsored by No Clubs and StateMedia.com. Find out about upcoming concerts in Tampa Bay by visiting StateMedia.com and tagging No Clubs on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Use the hashtag WeAreConcerts. And lucky for us, No Clubs just announced like 5,200 shows. 5,200? 5,200 shows. Damn. Not really 5,200, but a lot of shows. A lot of shows. Tuesday, August 14th, The Sword is driving themselves into the Orpheum. Thursday, August 23rd, Lupe Fiasco is going to be at the Ritz Ebor. Our friend Mike Mass is actually going to be opening for Lupe on that show. That'll be a kick-ass one. Don't miss. Thursday, August 30th, Strung Out, After the Fall, and Make War at the Orpheum. Uh, very excited for Thursday, September 20th, Prefuse 73 is going to be at the Crowbar. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time, but Prefuse is like one of the most kick-ass like instrumental hip-hop guys. So uh, be on the lookout for that show. Sunday, September 23rd, Lucero and Ben Coles at the Ritz Ebor. Thursday, September 27th, Colony House and Tall Heights at the Orpheum. Also Thursday, September 27th, Matt Kearney is going to be at the Ritz. So that's a two-show night. we got Colony House at the Orpheum and Matt Kearney at the Ritz. Friday, September 28th, another two-show night, but across the pond, or across the bay, I guess I should say. Not really across the pond. Dashboard Confessional, an all-time low at Janice Live. And then also going down Friday, September 28th, Andy Grammer is going to be at the Ritz Ebor. Saturday, September 29th, Skizzy Mars on the RUOK tour at the Orpheum. Wednesday, October 3rd, Trivium is coming to the Ritz Ebor. Trivium. Trivium. Wednesday, October 17th, Beartooth is coming to the Orpheum with Knock Loose and Silar. Just announced Thursday, October 18th, The Breeders featuring Kim Deal of the Pixies is at the Ritz Ebor. That's Thursday, October 18th. So excited for that one. Uh, hopefully we can get Kim Deal on the podcast. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Please. Friday, October 19th, Mike Shinoda is going to be at the Ritz Ebor. And then after October, we've got a super stacked November with Alan Stone, Sebastian Bach of Gilmore Girls fame, Jonathan Davis from Corn, The Main Squeeze, Mayday Parade, VNV Nation, Minus the Bear, Little Xan. All of that's coming up in November. So many shows. Like we said, 5,200 shows from No Clothes. 5,200. 5,200? You can find out all about them. Get tickets and go if you head to statemedia.com. Welcome to Cigar City Radio, episode number 80. The song you just heard was Mr. Computer by Warp Tour Veterans, the Fantastic Plastics. I'm your host, Randy Ojeda, and making the magic happen, a man who is not on a boat, Mr. Jason Solanas. Quite quite observant of you, Randy. Uh, you're, you're definitely not on a boat. Uh, you are correct. I also wonder when Mr. Computer will make it into... Why? Because they're fantastic and plastic. Yeah, that is true. I think I that is a, true. I, I think, think we have a merch that. idea. Uh, yeah, uh, we need uh, to talk to Tyson. I don't know stat. if we go for that. <laughs> It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Our guest on this episode is Emo Night Brooklyn DJ Andrew West. Andrew is formerly of the publishing company Razor and Tie, which is a record label home to bands like All That Remains, Star Set, 
the Pretty Reckless, Red Sun Rising, a bunch of cool bands. They were acquired by Concord Music Group, and now Andrew is an A&R at Concord Music Group, which is home to a bunch of record labels, including Fearless Records, Rounder Records, Stax Records, Loma Vista Records, uh, some artists you might have heard of on Concord Music, like James Taylor, Chick Corea, Allison Krauss, Ben Harper, George Benson, Kenny G. Uh, they even have a master catalog recordings of John Coltrane, John Fogarty, Frank Sinatra, Miles Davis, tons of Grammy nominations and Grammy wins under their belt. Um, and they're working with a lot of kick-ass current artists as well, uh, like St. Vincent, Sylvan Esso, Denzel Curry, just to name a few. So Andrew is a super cool guy. He's got his hands in a bunch of really cool places. And it was great that he came to town to DJ Emo Night Brooklyn. So had to take the opportunity to sit down with him. And since Andrew is one of these guys that's always hanging out with up and coming new bands, he brought a uh, local St. Pete slash Orlando based band Safer Waters with him. And we got to chat with them and meet them as well. Um, got to listen to a little bit of their upcoming release. So be on the lookout for new music from Safer Waters. Follow Andrew West on Instagram at a dubs wub wub. Seriously, at a d u b s w b w b a dubs wub wub. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming through. So here it is, episode number eighty. Very beautiful Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday night in Ybor City, Florida. We are at the world-famous Dysfunctional Grace Art Company, surrounded by some interesting pieces of art. We're in the library, so a lot of cool, interesting books on the occult and other things around us. I want to live here. Yeah. (laughs) It's one of the coolest places I've ever seen. Oh, no, this place is the best. No, this is one of those places where everybody walks by and they look at it and they're like, what is this? And then... You know, the brave walk in and then usually find something pretty cool. You know, there's a lot of interesting stuff. So we're hanging out with uh, Andrew West, who is going to be spinning some tunes tonight. Hello, DJing yes. At I'm Emo uh, Night Brooklyn. Emo Night Brooklyn. Um, I will be DJing at the Orpheum. Yeah, right next door. Right basically. next door. Essentially next door. Should be really cool. Uh, Ryan Key's coming out. Cool. Ryan um, Key's from Yellow Card. Yellow Card. Yeah. Um, he has his new uh, solo EP out. And yeah, we're doing a few days together. We did Orlando last night, and we're doing West Palm, and I'll be at the Warp Tour down there too. So yeah, I was I was saying that there's probably no coincidence in the fact that this emo night run lines up with the Warp Tour dates. We wanted to do that, and it just makes so much sense. Yeah, and a lot of people want to still keep partying and keep listening to the good old pop punk. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll get, we'll dive into that in a little bit. But we're also joined by Safer Waters. It's a band from the St. Pete area, am I right? Or St. Pete, Saint Pete Orlando. Orlando. St. Pete, Orlando. Both. A little. Okay. I see. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like two a long of us live out here, and the other two are in the Orlando area. So do you guys meet and in Lakeland for <clears throat> practices? Do you just meet in the middle? Is that what it is? Essentially, that would make sense, would make but sense. no. <laughs> <laughs> we had trouble finding a rehearsal space out there that we liked, and uh, so we just kind of have this long distance relationship long distance love i like it (laughs) so how did you wind up hanging out with this andrew west guy over here how did this happen we're brand new friends we we go way back i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) (laughs) thanks steve for that oh our friend steve our mutual mutual friend friend steve oh it's always it's always the mutual friend steve right yeah yeah Everyone's got a Steve. I actually, yeah, I was at your show. Yeah, I don't know if we met. I was, uh, I was probably just in the back, leaning against the wall. That's usually what I do most of the time. So that's the shows. move there. Yeah, yeah that's my move. Especially so- solo shows for yeah. sure. Right, yeah. where you're flying solo to a show. Flying solo to a show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lean against the wall. Lean against the wall. Yeah. That's just what you do. Find some friends. Go to their apartment afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, this, this guy, we were just uh, drinking coffee at the Blind Tiger. Uh, he came up to us and. Uh, 
I guess, was just being very creepy. Yeah. Oh, well, welcome to Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Ebor City. So what's the deal with Emo Night Brooklyn? It's like, it's... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do the, the, uh, the pitch, because Ethan and Alex, who are the creators, are not in Florida with us. Um, so they started about four years ago, yeah. and uh, it started in a basement in Brooklyn. Uh, they just came together. They, they've been best friends forever, um, and it, you know they start DJing pop punk nights. It slowly grew and grew and grew, and now they're doing it all over the country, and they wanted me to do it uh, on the dates they couldn't make. So Ethan is volunteering this, this weekend. He couldn't make it down. He usually does these dates. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to Detroit next week, uh, and then going to California the week after. Um, and they're usually weekend dates because we both have full-time jobs, or all of us have full-time jobs. Um, and yeah, there's there's four of us kind of DJing. Right on. And it's it's really fun, you know. People people love it. They come out and they want to hear their favorite songs. We spin them, uh, and it's just really fun. Yeah. What do you think it is about emo night that like right now it's such a you know it's such a big thing? Yellow card. Is it yellow, yellow card? card. <laughs> it's a lot. You know, I think it has a lot to do with the stage presence that you know Ethan and Alex give off. It's mm-hmm. not we're, we're you know they're not just standing behind a laptop they're really running around being very engaged with the people who come out and then they tell their friends about it however half the time you go in and you know probably 60 percent of the room has never been there so they show up being like is this a band is this just a person at a laptop but you know it only takes them like maybe two or three songs to kind of be like okay i know what this is now and this is fucking awesome yeah it's really fun and people just you know party have fun have a couple drinks and just scream their lungs out you know we do everything from lit we do you know lincoln park you know, yeah. or yellow card whatever it is you know we we kind of dive in do you take requests um occasionally or, or do you do you stick to a very strict emo regimen usually the day before they'll send out a blast taking requests but a lot of you know it's, most of the people who come out are usually our age so like late 20s i just turned 30 so it's more of just anything from early 2000 pop yeah. punk to maybe 2007 8 and then we'll sprinkle in some stuff here or there depending on like who the see guests there. are see <laughs> there. a little bit of see there well that was gonna be my next question is like so is the audience so it's people mostly like around our age people around that are, our that age. are nostalgic for the yeah. good old days of email. around our age and you'd be surprised a lot of people in the front are younger than us but they still know almost every word to all of the earlier songs wow like my chemical run like they kill it that kills it that kills it. oh i'm sure my chem oh always yeah. Kills it. um yeah, and you'd, I, you'd be surprised like you'd be surprised that there are 20 year olds who know forever the sickest kids still yeah. and i think it's they're, they're slowly finding out about it maybe their older brothers and sisters are still listening to it mm. and they just they love it yeah, I, I actually just got to see uh, Coheed and Cambria and Taking Back Taking Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, they they had that joint tour. And yep. first of all, there's a very clear divide between the Coheed fans and the Taking Back Sunday fans. It was Coheed like almost fans aren't a cult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like really yeah. obvious who was there for what band. Yeah, I mean Coheed's one of my favorite bands, and it's 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 crazy. I went to see them at Terminal Five uh, about a year ago. Um, they still crush it. Yeah, and I'm it's ha- I'm happy that they can still do sort of like arena size. You know, venues. Yeah. Everyone sings along to every single yeah, word every for a Coheed song. song. They sing along to the guitar solos, even. Yeah. You know? so <laughs> that's something. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so, do you consider like early Coheed? Is that emo? Does that, like, would you play something from Second Stage Turbine Blade on? Um, not Second emo Stage, night? probably. Yeah. Uh, Favor House. Maybe Favor kind of. House. Yeah. Yeah. I, I throw that in there. Sometimes. I'm sure people love when love Favor yeah. House. The, the, any, the only issue, which I, I mean, I love about Coheed is most of my favorite songs of theirs are like seven or eight minute bangers right so if, <laughs> i hate seeing someone in the back if they don't know it's like ah you know maybe we shouldn't have uh, tried we well, got one seven out. more minutes of this. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> please yeah. guys yeah, yeah. But, yeah I, we try we try and we try and figure out what songs people like usually love hearing and you know some people don't know the words but can scream along anyway so yeah 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 coheed we we we, we put some coheed songs in there i'm uh, sure you guys have a pretty solid playlist set up yeah, yeah. So I'm not a professional DJ whatsoever, but we use a program where, like, you can, you know, if Ryan's on stage, I know exactly what songs that he's already played. 
Ocean Avenue. Uh, he, he doesn't play. <laughs> I play. He, he makes me play Ocean Avenue. Yeah. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to play Ocean Avenue. <laughs> no, he will. He will. But it's it's always more fun when I just I do it. I'd like you know, I'll introduce <laughs> him and, and yeah, yeah. So what what's it been like hanging out with him and like getting to know him? Better? I mean, Ryan Ryan is uh, is the best. I haven't known him for so long. We actually put out um, a yellow card record. Uh, we put out Lift to Sail. Um, at Razor and Tie, where I used to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I never met him. Uh, I didn't work on that record, but he's he's the best. I've I've loved Yellow Card since I was probably 13 years old. Um, I think they're my favorite um, band in the genre. Like the songwriting is just incredible. Like he's an incredible songwriter. He's working on his his solo stuff now, which is amazing as well. So it's it's great. He's he's the nicest dude. Um, he's he's awesome. That's that's some seriously high praise right there. Favorite I, I mean, in the I, genre you know, from the, from tonight's know, emo night I mean, Brooklyn look, DJ. Al, you know? Alex, me and Alex who, who does emo night as well. He you know he'll he'll tell him too. It's like one of his favorite bands. Like Paper Wall is one of my favorite albums. Yeah, so. it's a favorite of a lot of people. So yeah. it's a very popular it's, album. Yeah, it's great. So uh, so Safer Waters. Tell me a little bit more about uh, what's going on in Safer Waters world. We've been focusing on writing really. Um, for a while now, but um, we're just uh, kind of getting more used to the writing process. We have a more solid uh, system. I think that we're starting to be able to read each other a little bit better, and our new stuff's coming out really, really smooth, really fluent. Yeah. Um, so we're really stoked to uh, put so, some new stuff out. So since you're kind of living in both <clears throat> worlds in a little bit, in both Tampa and Orlando, who has the better music scene? Oh, St. Pete for sure. Tampa. Yes, Tampa, absolutely. <laughs> Which is why we kind of say, like, even though none of us live in St. Pete, that's kind of where we like got started. Yeah, yeah. Because you just said you're in Clearwater, which is yeah. close enough to right. be St. Pete. Spent a lot of our time in St. Pete. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And stuff. Yeah, a lot of networking there. Yeah, St. Pete's for a sure. great place for for live music. I feel like it's, yeah, out of like all of Florida, I would say. Mm-hmm. St. Pete's the coolest and like the most everyone appreciates it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's no, it's not competitive. I feel like in St. Pete, everyone's really supportive. Laid back. And like, yeah, we've had most our, our best shows in St. Pete and, yeah. and Tampa. So there's definitely like St. Pete always gives me like a little bit of a Brooklyn vibe these days, too. Because yeah. there's a lot of like DIY spaces popping oh, up absolutely. and places that are like, you know, really it's not, you know, a corporate thing at all. We've played shows mm-hmm. where like the door to the venue is open and we'd, we'd start playing and there'd be, you know, what, 20 people in the room. And then I'd turn around and get into the music or whatever and look up and the, the, the place is packed. Yeah. And that doesn't happen in Orlando. Yeah. Like, shut that door, the music's too loud. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't go to too many Orlando shows. People always think, like, you know, bands that are coming through town will hit me up and be like, yo, can you help us get a show in Orlando or whatever? And I was yeah. like, I, I can't really because that's yeah. not like it's a, it, even though we're pretty close together, the Orlando and Tampa scenes are so yeah. like different and distinct. Oh, absolutely. St. Pete is the opposite. Yeah. Sound, yeah. Soundbar was cool. Yeah. Was Soundbar that? in Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very cool. Yeah. I haven't, we haven't played there since it was uh, back. Back. Right. Yeah. Back. It was, it was fun. Fun place. Social's place to play in Orlando. That's yeah. Social. I gotta check that out next time. Yeah. And now Orlando, like, but historically has kind of been a hotbed for like hardcore music and pop punk. It's and, definitely like those two genres. Those those two right. genres and specifically. A mixture of yeah. those two at the same time. Yeah. yeah, when I was when I was growing up, a lot of the bands that I listened to were either from Florida or they're from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. You know, those are the two. Those were seemed like there the two hot spots. A few years where Florida was pumping out some really good. Bands. Yeah, yeah. It was when like the fest was like really cooking. Yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah, that yeah, was when. That. Some of the best bands were coming. I mean, still, the fest is really cool, and there's yeah. a lot of kick-ass bands that, coming through Gainesville. That's in Gainesville, right? Yeah, yeah, it's in Gainesville, and then we do pre-fest in Little Ebor, which happens really? here the day before the day before fest. Oh no shit! Which is also really cool. cool. I think like Less Than Jake played that last year. They were like the big headliners oh, for right. pre-fest. Awesome. Very cool. So, oh yeah, yeah. We yeah. got a uh, show coming up on the thirty-first. Is it August thirty-first? Yep. Yeah, at Foo Bar. Foo Bar. Foo Bar. So downtown St. Pete. That'll be fun. We'll Very that. cool. Shameless so. Plug. So what have you what have you guys been up to so far today? Did you just did you just link up or yeah? Been, are you are you giving him the grand tour of of Ebor? Or, oh. <laughs> we haven't gotten there yet. No. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I got into Tampa at four, went to my hotel, uh, showered, um, and that's about it. That's the I met life, up with these the guys. Road, life of the that's road, and, and you just came straight to this. I, I I miss I miss driving. It's great. Like, You're not driving? No, no, I miss it. I, I rented a car ah. in New York. Like I don't, don't I don't need, either. I don't drive there. I have a car in Philly, but that's you know I haven't driven in seven months. The first ten minutes wow. were very, uh, 
Wow. Very difficult to navigate. <laughs> yeah. Not only are you in a different town, but you're just driving. You just drive well, for the you, first time. You would fit right in with the rest of Florida drivers. <laughs> this, this is completely absolutely the truth. The I didn't know that there were tolls where it ha- you had to pay the exact change. Mm-hmm. It was seventy five cents. Through I threw a dollar bill in, so hopefully it. Hopefully it worked. <laughs> well, a ticket for that. You Luckily, that that way. Luckily for you, this is like an amazing like. I wish this was a Florida man story, but apparently, like, there's a thing with the tolls going on right now, where like the company that's supposed to pay the government the money from the tolls, like in Florida, yeah. has not been paying. Wow. So like tolls are like kind of suspended for a while or something. <laughs> so I think you're okay. Can I, I think you're okay. writing. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm plowing through some tolls. No, seriously. I, I mean, I might be totally off base on the facts on this, yeah. but because you know, this isn't a news show no, in any not way. Not that I, not that I don't plow through the tolls anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, apparently the toll system, like most things in Florida, is totally a mess. So Sweet. I guess everyone's just been quiet about it. But then you know, once once like the Florida government doesn't get their money, then then they're upset. You know, yeah. the government is you know very angry when you don't pay them. Apparently. Oh yes. I get angry when I don't get. Paid. I don't get angry. Yeah. yeah, I know. I like getting paid too. So, so is Philly where you're from, Andrew? Or um, I am from originally uh, outside of of Philadelphia. Okay. Um, yeah, I was born up in Boston. Moved to Philly. Okay. Um, went to school in Long Island, New York. On Long Island. On Long, on Long Island, yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, I didn't spend right enough time there. No, apparently not. I know the five one six pretty well. Though, so. <laughs> yeah, um, and then I start, you know, started interning in school, um, and then yeah, I got hired by Razor and Tie out of school, and then I was there ever since, uh, and then they got acquired by Concord. Wow. So what did so what did you do at Razor and Tie? Like how did what did what did you get started? Um, I started. It was just typical like assistant stuff, and I sort of moved up. Um, started setting up co-writes for a publishing company. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a publishing company that had about forty writers. Um, so we had a Nashville office and a New York office. Okay. Um, went over to the label. Uh, we had an alternative label called Washington Square Records for a little bit. Um, worked with a band called Magic Giant and Rustin Kelly. Um, and then when we got acquired by Concord, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I thought I was going to get like let go. Yeah, that's so that like happens from, a lot. <laughs> from like January yeah. to to South by Southwest in March, I was sort of like personally just very depressed. I was like, oh man, should I like quit music? What should I do? Yeah. Um, and then Tom Wally, who runs all of the labels at Concord, rehired me in April. He's like, have you heard of emo night? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so. But first off, you can what? always tell somebody's been in the music industry for a little while when they base time off of South by Southwest. So it's like, okay, it was between January yeah, and Yeah, no, that's the like only time I know. Yeah. I was like, okay, here I am. <laughs> but, uh, but it's great. You know, there's, yeah. you know, Concord has five labels under or underneath, five or, five or six, Rounder, Fearless, Concord Proper, Fantasy, uh, Loma Vista. Um, and we are basically, we can work with any any genre. It's great. We have a shared services team that helps with radio and and yeah, it's, it's every every label has their different specialties and and, uh, and strengths. So you work with kind of the the overseer general overseer yeah. of mm-hmm. Concord Music. Uh-huh. So is it's, there? A it's partic- a new team. It's it's a brand new team. So um, Tom runs Loma Vista, and he ended up joining Concord. Uh, and it's been great. You know, we're all about really great songs. Um, we typically um, like to work with more left of center avant-garde type of bands to start mm-hmm. and, and yeah, we're developing a great team over there, a uh, great team of people and great, great artists. So you mentioned a handful of like kick-ass labels that are under Concord music group. So for like people listening, I'm sure the, the question you get asked all the time, but we got to address it on air is how do you get signed to a label like that? Like you have this to have really age. great songs. I mean, a lot yeah. of, a lot of artists don't even want a label anymore. That's true. Um, yeah. They don't need one. They don't want one. But we have, we really have the infrastructure for for our artists to really help them break to the next level. Um, it's it's really about songs at this point, which I really like about Concord. If you have really really good songs, we can, and that's my job. Yeah. Um, we have fantastic marketing teams throughout the labels. We have awesome execs over you know over there helping. But you know, my job from the ground up is basically just finding artists with really great songs, no matter if they're the beginning of the careers or if we pick them up on their second record or their third record. Um, you know, Loma broke ghosts, which is an amazing band. Um, 
you know, they're working on Sylvanesso. We have a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Love so, Sylvanesso. Yeah, they're really, yeah. really good. And, you know, they're, they just played with one of another one of our bands, Local Natives, and they just, it was amazing up in Boston. Um, I wasn't there, but I, I heard it was amazing. And, yeah, so it's just kind of looking for really talented talented artists like i went you know i went to see this one artist who's selling out a place in jersey he's got a couple million streams online and he's really really just building up and he you know he may not want a label but yeah. it's more of depending on if he if he likes us as a team if he wants to work with one of our labels you know it's we can help him out so how how important are the numbers now for bands you know how important are the spotify streams and the follows and you know all that jazz for for me, typically it's not that important, but it it is to a lot of a lot of people. Yeah. But to, to me, at, at, on a ground level, it's not that important. Um, it's you know, data is important. It's it's all around us. I have access to it. Um, you know, what's on, what's playing on the radio? How many? What are the consumption? You know, streaming sales. You know, digital, all of that stuff. And it's nice. It's nice to see. Saying okay, a band has been at this point, and they're and they're getting to this point, and people are starting to take notice. That's a benefit, but to me, it's all about the songs. I dig that. I think that's how it should be. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Andrew has been staring at us the whole time. He's been talking about this stuff, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need something song, to stare at. Songs got to be good. <laughs> there is. Th- there are some animals in the back. I'll just stare at them. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. funny to stare at in this room. Yeah, <laughs> that is definitely true. Yeah, no, Andrew. I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about this, but Andrew did send me some unreleased stuff. Just two, the two while. older songs. I apologize, guys. Yeah. I knew you were going to remix can, them. We can talk yes. about those. Yeah, right on. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah th- and that hasn't been released <clears throat> yet, though, right? That's no, right. No, no, right. Yeah. So when is it we're uh, yeah. we're getting it mixed again. That's kind of how it happens sometimes, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been a slow process, but we're going to be putting them out, I would say, within the next couple months for sure. Right. So we're just trying to get them to sound as badass as we want them to sound. So. Yeah. Well, it's already sounding pretty badass from thank what you. I've heard. So, Appreciate that. you know, I'm excited to hear what the finished product is. That's, thank you. Thank you, you know. so much. Yeah, it's tough getting people excited, though, in 2018. You know, it is. Tough, you know, getting, getting people very excited <laughs> about... Just, like keeping their attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing is because there's always, you know, there's so many avenues to to get music that it's like. Well, you don't have this song. You'll have 15 other songs that you can listen to. Yeah. So being like consistent and sticking out is definitely. Well, that's why what what I try to tell bands is is to find, you know, your what is your specific audience? You know, because obviously not everybody's going to be into every band. So find who is your actual audience and wh- yeah. where do they shop? What else do they listen to? What do they do? What, you know, what music service are they using? Yeah. And that's where you should be building, Absolutely. you know, as opposed to trying to, you know, cast a wide net and reach everybody. You got to yeah. be like as specific as you can. Too, yeah. Right. Yeah. And get those hardcore fans, oh, absolutely. you know, yeah. that's actually something this is, this is going to be great transitional work on my behalf, but that's something that I learned working at Disney because Disney taught me. I didn't know you um, worked at Disney. I did work. Yeah, I worked. Well, I worked at Disney World. So let's m- make that clear. Okay. <laughs> that's a lot. That yeah. is a lot of Disney stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And everything. Um, but one of the things that they teach, like, in, from the very beginning is how important having a lifelong fan is. And that's what Disney's entire brand is built off of, is capturing you when you're really young. Yeah. and holding on to you forever and ever and ever do i know where this conversation is going <laughs> oh you know where this conversation is i don't think i don't think the band knows knows where this is going this but. is going because andrew you also in addition to being dj for emo night brooklyn you have a disney night i did in nyc oh, and I when i first heard about this i was like i immediately was like checking flights like can i go to new york so i can be a part of this night because it sounds so cool <laughs> well i mean we were just thinking and i i do have to sort of give credit again to the emo night brooklyn Brooklyn guys, uh, there was never really a branded Disney thing. Yeah. So I, you know, I came up with it just sitting at work, not doing work, thinking about Disney. Right. Um, and it was just, you know, it was a, an idea. And I heard someone singing a Disney song in the office, and I asked her if she wanted to help me do it. And we got another person involved as well. Uh, and yeah, we've been selling Mercury Lounge out. And yeah, I'm sure. Sick. Have you we're, given any thought to merging Disney and emo night into? Disney? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I feel like there's an overlap in audience. There's got to be. And it, it's it was it's interesting because people. I knew Disney's a, a massive thing. Um, I like the movies. I like the songs, but I'm not a huge fan. 
the people who show up to these things, they dress up. Yeah. They know every word to every song. You just play a whole new world. Eight yeah, times. you know, it's, it's weird because we have to sort of go back. I had, you know, uh, my coworker Jackie, um, she helps a lot with the song choice. Uh, <laughs> but, we, but it, you know, we have about three hours of solid Disney songs. It's just a lot of them are really sad. So yeah. we, have yeah. to, we have to sprinkle in some pop stuff from like Miley and, and you know, stuff. Yeah, just from, from like the old Disney like family, Disney, yeah, you know, yeah. Disney family. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, we're we're moving it around. We're we're slowly building a brand. We've only done maybe five of them, but we're doing one at City Winery, uh, and then we're going back doing a Hall- Halloween one at Mercury Lounge. And yeah, yeah, we're getting just we don't have press or anything, but it was featured on like Today New York or something. They well, post about it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like that's like that's exactly what I'm talking about with like building these lifelong fans. Is like. You know, you probably don't realize how many Disney songs you actually know, but you Absolutely know them not, all. Yeah. You know, like you know them all just through being part of pop culture and yeah. just being alive, you know, from whatever age you started. It's the happiest place on earth. That that it is. Yeah. But yeah. You should actually go and DJ over there because sometimes they do like they try to do these DJ nights at Disney and it just never oh, works it does. out. No. Huh. You know, it's the, the, the Stitch 626 dance party or Uh-oh. whatever it is. Ne- not fun. But, you know, it's not like it's not even like a D. De- it's more of like a dancing thing. Like we yeah. just we don't remix the songs at all. People we, dancing like booty dancing. Yeah. yeah. A whole new world. Is that yeah. really grinding? Yeah. yeah. What's we, what's we, the what's the biggest crowd pleaser at Disney night? I mean, when you when we start with Circle of Life, it just just going uphill from that. You know, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. there it, goes nuts. Um, what is that song? Ida, Ida, I or something is pretty good. You know, Ida, I, Frozen, Frozen. Oh, well, of course, Frozen, Frozen stuff yeah, yeah. kills. And then after a while, it's like, yeah, you got to play um, Party in the USA. Yeah, okay. you know, stuff like that is Back good. Up. Yeah, yeah. It's, and then you know, it's it's great. People stand around. We have our specialty cocktail drinks like the Poison Apple. Nice. So that's yeah, that's that about it. Really you know, it's, it's just, just fun. the poison People, apple. That's no, the only there's like, one. There's like six of them. I can't <laughs> yeah. remember the names. Yeah. Another round of but poison apples. You can have the gray stuff. That would be another. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. It'd Probably look disgusting. Drinker Bell is one of them. Drinker Bell. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's it's fun. People, you know, it's it's really great. So the even at Brooklyn stuff and in the Disney stuff, when people come up to you and say it was the best night of their life, it's like so worth it. It's just like fun. Yeah, people have fun, and and you know, it's it's a great, it's awesome. It's just so, creating a, an experience. It's creating an experience for people who like don't have an outlet. Yeah. For for things, you know, some people go alone to these things, and we're now really good friends. So it's just, it's cool. They That's they awesome. they meet people out at these things. They just have people that go out and and they they meet new Disney friends. They meet new emo night. Broken yeah. Friends. So so same question that I asked about Disney night. I want to ask about emo night. What is the number one show stopping crowd pleasing song? I guess besides Ocean Avenue. It it every night is different. Honestly, I'm not saying this just because uh, it's in Florida, but the downfall of us all like yeah. kills. Oh, really, destroy every single time I play that. Yeah, it is just people go insane. Nice, I do too. Every time. Yeah, <laughs> as soon as they hear it, they go nuts. Wow, I would not have guessed that. Yeah, as, as the one. Uh-huh. Very nostalgic. Yeah, yeah. I would have guessed like. I'm not okay. That's what I'm, I'm not yeah. okay. Does yeah. does MCR relatively well. Well, it's it's funny because the Black Parade does better really? in, in most in most times. I think yeah. it's because of the intro, right? Yeah, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And teenagers from my chem, like people love that. Oh, more like the the older hit, you know, Sugar We're Going Down. Yeah, obviously, like the Paramore stuff is really good. Yeah. We do like sort of um, like a slow, like my only exception. People really love. It's like a slower, you know, slower one, but. Anything, you know, fat lip, a- any of the songs are just, you know, you just got to change it up depending on what people, what people are kind of into at, in the moment. And we never have like a set playlist. We kind of like have all of the songs and whoever's our guests. And we have a ton of guests that come out and yeah, especially from Warp Tour, we get a lot of cool people, you know, Derek from State Champs was out last night hanging out. And uh, yeah, they have a ton of, you know, Keith's probably coming out from uh, Every Time I Die. So and we got, you know, just a lot of friends. How Super. heavy do you go on the set list? You know, like, do we get into real hardcore territory? You guys save that stuff for Screamo Night? Is that yeah. Oh, or, yeah, is Screamo Night next? Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we play probably, I'm not saying, I can't speak on Ethan and, and, uh, and Alex, but I try and play maybe three or four, like, heavy, heavy songs. Cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. That'll be, those will be the ones I'll be waiting for. Yeah. Tonight. Do you want to go tonight? What are you What are you doing? I'll come. I'll come tonight. Come. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. throw in the list. Let's go. Yeah. I I, I, I haven't been to one. Away. So. <laughs> yeah. I heard it's not far away. It's <laughs> no, it's right two blocks door. down. Yeah. Yeah. So so tell us uh, what's on the horizon then for for Andrew West and and for you guys and for Safer Waters. You guys want to start? Do you want to meet? Yeah. Him? We're gonna uh, go check out the chickens first. Okay. And Ebor. I mean, that's it. That's that's that's, that's all. That's I was about. thinking the Greater Horizon. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but not, not the immediate not the Ebor, yes. not the yeah. Ebor Horizon. Yes. Yeah. But you said you're writing now. We're still working on some new music, getting that unreleased stuff out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Just Taking our time. Creating you a know. game plan with all these songs. We're yeah. On and hanging out with Andrew. Yeah. Well, he actually, seems like a good guy to hang out with. I would definitely pick his brain as much as you can. That's what we're doing. You know. yeah. I'm excited for our show because we haven't played uh, since our state theater show. Yeah. Which was like April. Right. So no club show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah shout out to no clubs. We've yeah. sponsored this podcast. We've had a really? lot of energy yeah. building up since then. Yeah. yeah. We've been yeah. heavy writing since that show, pretty much. All right. Well. Thank, the good thing no clubs put you on there, you know. Shout out to uh, shout <laughs> yeah, out to yeah. state media. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a great time. Yeah, it's fun. We had fun. Good shit. And Andrew, what about you? Just gonna be rocking uh, Eminem shirts till you die. <laughs> <laughs> I wear this way too much. Um, <laughs> um, for you know, you know, like Brooklyn stuff, uh, Disney night stuff. I'm you know, I'm I'm going to California with Eminem Brooklyn. Going to Detroit. Um, kind of all over the place. For my actual career, um, you know, it's it's relatively new at Concord. Um, about three months, three or four months in, uh, it's been great. Just trying to meet as many artists as I can, managers, attorneys, trying to just build up some some great relationships and uh, sign some great artists and help Concord build their build their catalog with with new developing artists. Uh, well, thank you for uh, appreciating like up and coming bands. And absolutely, you know, like- it's uh, it's the the key to the future. Yeah, that sounds so big. <laughs> I mean, where do what do you like? You know, it's, it's new true. music is everything. Like yeah. how you know you you got you got to support new music, yeah, new artists, or else uh, we're all going to be dinosaurs, and then we're all going to be dinosaurs. Yeah. End up in this place. For sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll end up in our heads will be. <laughs> all right. On the wall. Well, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us.